Hi everyone, welcome back to Grandpa Mark's Hobbies and a how-to on how I wired my Ford Mustang engine. If you want to take your engine to the next level, stick around. A couple of simple tools and some basic supplies and you can have your engine all wired up. All right, we're going to do a Ford engine here. This is off the 65 or 64 and a half Mustang. And what we did so far is I just painted the uh, the engine block black, the intake black. I did the transmission aluminum, uh, flat aluminum. This is all Tamiya paint, um, just because I didn't like it all black like I had it. Uh, the oil filter I did in a white. The starter I did just like that with a little bit of flat aluminum and semi-gloss or in gloss black. And then I did the exhaust in um, Tamiya's, I believe it is, gunmetal. Yes, gunmetal. So we, we're at that point right now. I already drilled the holes for the spark plugs, but I did that before I painted, and they're gone. <laughs> so what we're going to do here is I have these pin vices. I got these on Amazon. The link will be in the description down below here somewhere. You just have to look for it. And I'm going to use the green one out of this pin vise. There's two green. I'm using the smaller of the green. And the reason why I'm using that is because that's what fits my 0.3 millimeter solder. This is our spark plug wire. 0 0.03 millimeter solder. I started using this... Uh, a couple of years ago because it just frustrated me to no end to try to run um, solid wire, uh, thread, all kinds of stuff that I tried over the years. And this I like because it bends and holds where it goes. Very simple, but if you want to straighten it out, you just run your finger across it and it's back to straight and it takes paint well. Um, I, like I said, I use Tamiya paint on that. With this, since we're using the gloss black, um, I'm going to use a flat black for my spark plug wires. So what I'll do is for that is I'll take these and I'll cut them about two inches long, somewhere around here. And longer is always better. You're going to cut ends off. So you just cut it off like that. Um, my snicker bar fingers, it's very difficult to pick them up. Tweezers, lift it, and then you just take that and grab hold of it in a clothespin. Then you can run your paint on there, no problem. Then you don't need to watch me paint wire. It's just Tamiya's XF1 small brush with paint on it take it and run it down just do all the sides while it's straight it will paint it does flex a little bit flex it back the other way it's not a big deal you're gonna bend this thing nine ways to Sunday anyhow when you put it on the engine so go ahead and paint yours up you'll need nine of them um, eight for the plug wires one for the coil so do that when you get your chance um, usually I do that real early, but for some reason I'm way behind on this build. Uh, I've been doing a lot of the detail works on other things and just kind of neglected doing the wires. And I knew I had to do them. But let's get into here. What we're going to do is we're going to... I got my visor on, so if I'm bumping into this, I apologize. We're going to find where I did the plug wires. And I'm going to run this back in through them after I painted. And I do this every single time. So this is all you have to do. And it doesn't have to be in there super deep. But find your hole somehow. Run the wires in, or the, the drill in. And you see, I got that one in there. And if I pull that straight out, it'll leave a little mark. And then when we go to put the wires in, we'll be able to see that. And every time you see, <laughs> see the, uh, boy, that does disappear. 
Every time you see the camera move, that's me bumping it with my visor. So I apologize because I can't see squat with this blue and the gloss. But yeah, we got right there. We got one right here. <coughs> and we got one more right here. So that's the holes in the block. Okay, so that's the holes in the block. I also scraped some paint away for the exhaust manifold. Because they're going to fit in here like this. The distributor's up front, obviously. But what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to get all the wires poked into here first. Stick it out. They'll stick out about that long. And then we're going to run this over the top of them. Glue it into place. Let it sit until it's dry. Because we need a good positive glue here and then we'll start bending those wires over the top of the valve covers and things like that our distributor cap is painted i painted it a uh, semi-gloss black just put it on uh, some sticky tack this stuff you get at the dollar store it's cheap as snot you can use it over and over again put it on i got this on the foamy part of a q-tip and shove that on there just so it would hold in place to where I could paint it. There's the bottom part of that. Um, this is an aftermarket distributor that was given to me, but I'm going to use it exactly the same as you would the stock one. So don't think that, oh man, you got to get a, a different distributor cap and, and distributor and all that. No, use what you got because we're doing this on the cheap. And that's the big thing is this only costs like eight bucks and you can do a million cars with it. Stay on the cheap. No sense in buying all the fancy stuff. Let me put my distributor together. Um, I'll get my wires painted and then I'll bring it back and we'll start gluing this thing up. Okay. Got the engine all ready. We have eight spark plug wires. Painted, ready to go. I got a coil wire. And to start things off, I have two heater hoses. So kind of got to run the heater hoses first so that I can run the wires over the top. So let's start out by doing the lower radiator hose, or the upper radiator hose, I'm sorry. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to take this piece of solder and again this is this solder that i use this was given to me i don't know where you could get it or anything like that but this is the solder i do use it's 0.6 millimeter and it just it's very versatile i use it for quite a bit of things i have i have some super glue in a little cap here. All I do is get a little bit on there, find the hole. I can see the hole. It's hard to do with the black and we'll put it right in there. I'm going to let that sit for a minute and dry and I'll bring it right back. Okay, now that that's on and dried, I put the distributor in just set it in there. It's glued in tight. Um, let's run this heater line. And what this one does is it's going to run back and over the cross and attach to the uh, choke assembly right here and then run down the back. So what I'm going to take is a little bit of glue and I'm just going to put it right here just a little drop. Hey, and if you cut a little wedge on the back of your um, toothpick, it won't roll around when you set it down. So now we'll just, now we'll just keep, I'll bend this back gently and it'll bend by itself. It'll go where it wants. I'm kind of putting a little forward pressure on it just to give it a little swoop there. And I'm going to come down 
and into that glue. I'm going to put my thumb on where the glue is. Try not to glue my finger, and I'm going to run it down and around out this way. I don't think this model, i got to look, but I don't think this model has a um, heater in it. I might have to make one. And one thing about this solder is it glues on there really quick with the super glue. So we got that one. I want to put the one in here, and I'm going to run it up here too. Um, and I keep messing my fuel line up. This does not have a fuel pump on this car. So I am running this like it's got an electric one in the back. Just kind of tuck it in like that. So I just brought it out of the carb, down, around the front, and this way. Remember, our vacuum advance I got going into the carb over here. So I left this up a little bit so I can finagle that in. And we'll start from here and work our way back. But let's move this back and out to where I'm not going to jerk it up too much. I'm going to stop. I'm going to grab another thing, and I'll bring you right back. All right, I had to find my uh, vacuum advance line, which is the same as the um, spark plug wires, just not painted. Because a lot of the pictures I've seen show this with just a regular line running in there. And that's in. Now I'm going to let that sit for a few minutes. I'll bring it right back when that's dry. Okay, it's been a full two minutes. And now it's time to run this vacuum advance line around. And I'm just going to do the same thing. I'm going to bring it around in this way. And I want to do a couple of tighter bends to this. Because this is like aluminum line or, or uh, steel line. So I want to make it look really good. So we're going to come around here. I'm going to come up. And I'm going to bring it to where I can see... Put a little 90 here. I'm going to put this down for a second. I'm really trying to do this without my hand being in the way. If you were doing it on your own, like I always say, you'd already be done. So you see how long we made it. I'm going to come out to about here and give it a snip rooney. Now, take my trusty toothpick. Grab a little stick juice, just put it on the tip like that. We don't need a whole ton of it because really it's not going to go anywhere. And to be honest with you, we really don't need any. But now I'm going to kind of bend this around like that. Not into it yet. I'm going to keep bending it, trying to keep my fingers out of the picture. We'll put it in here just like that. Now we're going to let that sit because I'm going to actually kind of bend that down and down on a 90 drop. So my visor again. Give that a quick whistle. This fuel line is the one that's getting me. I should glue it in place here because I'm really messing it up. See here, but the beauty of this solder is it's forgiving. See there, I can tuck that right back in and kind of manipulate it to where it's just out of the way. And then once we put this down in, I'll make it nice. But right now, this is going to be up with a fan belt and everything. So we want to turn that, I just pulled it out, so we'll do it twice. We'll come down, and you got to play with it. It's no big deal. Round it up, and see how that just came back. 
It's hard to do this with just one set of tweezers and my finger. So here we go, we're getting close now. I'm making a loop out of it like that. I'm gonna hold this down and bend it in like that. I'll bring it up, put it in the hole. Kind of, I'm trying, can't see it. Now, we'll get that up, we'll get this down. There we go. And in. Hardest part. Because I can't really drill that little piece out anymore. There we go. What we're doing is we're just taking this around off the intake, bringing it around, down, and making it to where it's a little bit flexible to come in so you can adjust your, um, your timing. So now that that's done, the next thing we have to do is drop in our second heater hose. Let's get a little bit of solder, or get a little bit of glue on the solder. We're gonna drop that in the side right here just like that, and I drill that nice and deep so that it won't fall out and we can move right along here. So I'm gonna also bring this one up and over and out the back and see there? Now we can run both of those off to the side over in a firewall. These things are super humongously long. We can trim them down, run them right up. I'll drill a little hole in the firewall where they're supposed to go. When we drop the engine in, we'll fish those in too. So there we, we go. We have our heater hose going up on our choke. We have our other heater hose coming across the top. Our vacuum advance is in. Now we have to figure out where we're gonna lay that coil in. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open this up just a bit. By pulling this back out and over, just a smidge and down and in like that. We'll flex it just a smidge. And I think I wanna lay that coil right in here. Okay, so I'll bring it back in a second when I find my coil. Okay, I found my coil, set that down. I'm gonna get a little bit more. This is the uh, glue I'm using. And I get it off of Amazon. It's not really all that super cheap. And you know what? I'm gonna get a new toothpick too. It's not all that super cheap, but it really, really, really works great. Now here's what I was talking about. Just take this, give it a cut on the angle. And then like I said, when you set it down, it doesn't go rolling across the desk. So it won't make a a mess in your uh, glue. <laughs> so I'm gonna grab some glue, just a little tiny bit on the end of the toothpick. We're gonna set it right there on the head. And then I'll grab my favorite tweezers. I probably had these tweezers for 50 years. I'm just gonna glue that right to the head like that. So there we go with that. And now we don't have to worry about that too much because I'm not gonna use that until all the other spark plug wires are run. So let's start doing that. And remember, we're gonna run spark plug wires, then we're gonna put our uh, exhaust manifolds on, then we're gonna run the spark plug wires up to the uh, distributor brain is not functional today. So this is what I got yesterday. Remember we painted it. I used Tamiya's rubber black. I love this stuff. I'm going to move this out of the way because I will knock it. <laughs> I, 
cannot pick this up off the uh, the pad. I have to use the tweezers. My fingers are too big. So I'm gonna take one side of this is where it was being held. That gets smooshed a little bit. So we always wanna start gluing it with the, the painted end. And I don't worry about boots um, just because most of the time when you get the intake or the exhaust manifold put on there, um, they're gone. You can't even see it. So I'm just putting these in the holes that I drilled, just like that. I'm gonna do all eight of them and I'll bring it back. You don't need to watch me drill in the uh, wires or glue in the wires. So I'll bring you back in a minute here. Okay, all the wires are put in and uh, pretty much lined up where we want them to be. I'm gonna start putting the uh, exhaust manifolds on. Now what I did is I brought the two center ones together. This front one and the back one are kind of going to get pushed that way, but they all come over the top this way anyhow. So what I want to do right off the rip is I want to get some super glue on that head. So I'm going to take some glue on my... We're going to come down here. And like I said, this is a lot easier to do when it's not on film. So get the glue on there. Grab, make sure you got the <laughs> right exhaust manifold. And we're going to fish this over top of all four of the wires. Like I said, we're going to bring it down. I can feel it compressing those wires right now already. And I want to make sure that we're laid in here nice and flat. So we're going to sit here. I'm going to hold this flat on there and I'll bring it back when this one's dry. Okay, you can see that one's on there. I'm going to grab some more glue. We're going to run a bead down here. Well, I got a bunch on there. I'm gonna run a bead down here. All the way up. You see, I scratched the paint off as good as I could without really destroying everything. And now I'm gonna come on this one this way. And I'll tell you what, seriously, this is about as hard as the whole thing gets is bringing this down. Look at all those wires getting all crinkled around. Do not worry about it. Once this is dry, we can mess with them and get them perfect. So let me get this on here the right way, nice and flat. And again, a lot easier when you're doing, oh, I just broke my other side off. When you're doing it not on camera. So I'm gonna get that right where I want. Tuck that down in tight on the starter. My fingers on the way. Tuck that down right in there on the starter. Nice and flat. I can feel that one being flat. So I'm gonna let that dry. I should have let the other one dry. I only let it go for about five minutes and that's what I did. So I'm gonna re-glue this one <laughs> and I'll bring it back once everything's solid dry. Okay, it's been overnight and we got our exhaust manifolds nice and tight our lines all run up here pretty good let me take a second here to um uh, tangle them and this is why i love using solder because these are easy as pie to deal with. Try to do this where I keep my dang hands out as much as I can. So if I remember right, where it 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Correct? Correct. And we got a firing order of one, five, four, two, six, three, seven, eight. <laughs> I'm looking at it over here. I wrote it down. I probably won't get it on there right or close, but it's always fun to think about. I'm going to take my first wire, which is the number one. I'm going to come up, bend it up. We're going to bring it around, and we're going to say our number one. We'll put it right back here. So I'll get my thumb in here, bend it around like that. I'm looking to see how much extra from here up I have. And I'm thinking I'm going to need about that much. And I don't, I think that's going to be way more than I need. But we'll start finagling it. I'm going to just bend this around. And I'm going to push it right in that number one. Just like that. Now let's see how that looks. We're coming up. We have gravity uh, pushing the wire down. We're going to come up and we're going to put it right in that hole, which we did. We'll tuck it in just a smidge. Pull it right out of the hole. There, now what I want to do is I'm just going to give myself an idea of how big this air cleaner is. See, the air cleaner is going to come in contact there. So we gotta keep these things right down on it. So what I'm gonna do here, take that. We're in the hole, right? Yes. And I'm gonna just push it down flat like that. Now let's take this air cleaner. Come over here and look at there. We're good. We have good clearance. Clarence, Clarence. I can't see. Yeah, I'm on there right now. So we're good. That's got more play than I thought it'd have. <laughs> yeah, see, we, we're good by a good, I don't know, 0.4 millimeters. So that's one. I drive myself crazy here. I'm going to come up and wrap it. Now I want to get this out of the way of the carb. So I'm going to get a toothpick. And I'm going to kind of push and squish right here. I want this down inside here, out of the way. And see what I'm looking for is I'm looking for keeping this tight on the valve cover, drop down, bring it around. And up and in. So we'll come up. Let's see here. What would that be? I come up around the front with it right here. Like this. Kind of wrap it around, get it out of the way. I want that down there farther like that and now we'll wrap it around here we'll come up cut it long plenty long Our tweezers and I'm so hoping I'm keeping this in frame Just roll this over, and we'll go right. As a matter of fact, I'm going to cut some more of that off. And we're going to pull it up a little bit. I have it laying on the vacuum advance. So we'll kind of wrap it up here. 
around and I gotta really watch it don't break off other stuff but this solder bends pretty dang easy that's why I like using it and now I'm gonna bend it around on itself get my finger up here and one and two and see I'm just kind of bending on that little hoop in there and when I put that in a hole it should lay down there nicely the whole problem is is see in the hole look at that all right that's two let's come back over here and we'll grab the number whatever wire here so i've already lost count and and to be honest with you there's going to be so many wires in this little guy It'll be hard to do. See, I don't want to do that. See how I got that going up? I want to get that down inside there and kind of have it playing good with the, uh, the, the heater hose, which I think in my video last night, I was calling a radiator hose. So, sorry about that. <laughs> Let's come way around here. And I'm gonna feed it up and around. See what I'm doing is I'm just trying to get it to where it looks like the wires are, are laying with gravity. Cause really that's the main thing is if, if they're not like this, see how it's floating? I wanna get that down on that valve cover. And you don't wanna really use your fingernails because you will scratch the lines and you gotta watch holding on to your exhaust because you'll break it off. You will kind of give a couple of scratches here and there to the, to the hose or the wires. Don't fret. They can be touched up very easily. See how I'm kind of pushing that up against. Now we're going to give it a quick bend way up here find a hole kind of push it up and then we'll drop it down inside there man are these distributors nice this is the best i've ever used okay so that's three i got a little tangle going on here there we go. Come up this way and over. Shove it down inside. It doesn't want to bend very easy for me. So we'll take the toothpick and see there, push it down in, get it in there. Let's come around right here. Give this a snip way out here just to clear some room for me. We'll start bending this up right there and I'm going to bend it up and I'm going to kind of twist it around and straight in there just like this. What black on black is really difficult to see what you're doing, but we'll go right here. Give it a twist. I'm going to pull it up, twist it like that. See how I pulled it up and out? But now I'm going to put it in here. Get it in the distributor cap. And now we're going to kind of get rid of that kink just by rolling that around like that. And now we got a good flow up around and down and in there just like that we'll come over here with this one we'll follow this up look at how nice that uh 
wires look on the gold. That really makes that gold pop. This one, we're gonna come up and around the front like it should be here. And now you see why you wanted to get your uh, heater hoses and all that done underneath there. Because it just kind of eats it up. We'll push that down just a bit right there. Now I'll go with my thumb gently on that. And we're going to figure out where we're going to go, which is right there. We'll take a snip. And I'm just guessing the height of that. This is so forgiving. Once you, you decide, you know what? I really don't need to do a firing order. You can if you want. But when I'm done, I think it'll look great. I think, it's looking, <laughs> I think it's looking great already. And that's another reason why I love using this wire, is it's so easy to straighten out. Look at that. Done. All right. We'll continue going back and forth here, because that seems like it's working out pretty good for me. So I'm going to come over the top. I'm going to lay it down inside there by bending it this way and pushing it down at the same time. And it kind of rolls down the, the valve cover. And we'll come around with this. Let's do this one easy right here. That looks like it should go right in that one. So snip. More than long enough. We'll come up. Get it to go down into the crack there just a little bit for the gravity thing. And as long as you keep thinking about gravity and how it's going to pull these wires down towards everything, wires don't float. They will lay down. Get that up. Around. In there. Jeez, oh, Pete Draco. <laughs> these, the, these are really nice distributors. Now we're looking at two more. Going right up front here. So we'll come around with this. Bring it down. Take my toothpick. Push it in there. See how it's kind of bending everything around. And we'll come around here up. Just like this. Get my length, which will be about right there. Come up front, take a good look. Everything looks like it's laying in there nicely. So we're going to give this a quick bend up top here, like that. Just fold it over and see how far back I'm going to be. So we're going to put that in this one right here. He 3D printed these things for me in several different sizes so I can match them out. And I didn't realize until I started working on these how stinking... Oops, I knocked that down. How stinking nice these are to work with. One more. Come up around. We're going to go what, down, up, around, and over, and this way, up and in. Just like that. Take, we'll do a snip up about that high. Right there. Beautiful. Push it down just a bit. Grab your tweezers. These tweezers are old as dirt. I've had these things, they, I got the, I think they were Terry's to be honest with you, but I've been using them 
since I got back into modeling, just because they are so comfortable in my hand. Get that in the hole, kind of push it down and around. I think this one's sticking out, yeah. Put that in the hole, push it down and around. Give it a tap. And there you go, we got one more wire to run. And that's our coil wire. So I had that, you know what, I got like 50 of them over here and I do that every time. <laughs> so we'll get, we'll get a little bit of glue in there. Just a drop, big drop, but it's a drop. Let's find. Well, this one was designated for it. So let's give it a quick straighten. Come in here. That's all you need. Drop that right in that coil. Like that. Pretty much. I'm gonna sweep these out of the way over here to the side. The 80 coil wires right there. <laughs> Didn't need to really make that ninth one. But you never know. So I always do. Now the coil comes up this way, and it's going to go dead center. So we're just going to kind of fold that around because it's still got weight to it. I'm going to clip it off well past. I'm going to take my thumb, kind of just keep it from backing up. And we're going to fold it around, just like that. And I can't see the center. And... There we go. See, that's sticking up kind of high. So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of squish it down. And we're going to fold it down this way, around the back. Because, yeah, it's a long coil wire, but gravity is going to make it want to fall over on itself. It's not going to want to stay up in the air way up in a big hook like this. They're going to want to lay down flat. So now let's look at our valve covers. Make sure everything's laid down, or wrapped around it, and dropped in. Check it out. Guys, it's as simple as that. And... I admit I'm using one that's pre-made, pre-drilled and all that. Um, if I'm not, I don't drill my distributors. I'll just bring the, the wires up to where they look pretty dang close and leave them sit, just touching it. And it's, the, the, the wires don't move around. That's the beauty of all this is once you put that solder down there, as long as you're not getting your big gloppal fingers in there, this is all you need to do. So with that, once we put the car in the, in the uh, chassis and then get the body down on there, that's when I'll decide where I'm going to snip this. Um, not until that very end when that body's coming down will I have to figure out what I'm doing with these because there's no heater core on the car. So I can pretty much just say, all right, you know what? These are going to sit right over here. And what I'll do is I'll bend them, I'll bend them up. So they stick up out of the hood. So when I'm bringing the body down, those will be out of the way. Then I can decide my size. I'll cut them off to length. I'll bring them down. I might even drill holes because you can pull this back, get it in there, and then push it in through the hole. It's, it's, it's flexible enough to do that. See, this stuff, even the bigger stuff, moves pretty good. And I'll show you again my roll. And I, I wish I knew where I could get this. But, I mean, there's like 10 pounds of it here. <laughs> no, I bet you, honestly, I bet you there's three pounds of it. But, there's the end. I'm going to take a little bit of this and just snip it off. I want to show you, even this bigger stuff is super duper flexible. You can do all kinds of, of uh, bends with it. And now, like I said, I want to put that in there so I can bend that back 
get it out of the way, drop that in the car, and then use the tweezers and find the hole, push it in there, and it'll look good. So there you go. Our engine's wired, ready to go. Our fuel lines run back. Heater hoses are run. Distributors run. Fuel lines run. Vacuum advances run. That's ready to drop in a chassis. And with that, I'm going to let you go. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you think about it, give me a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. I'll keep trying to do more and more of these. As we go along, we'll, we'll start having more and more volume because I'm going to have some time. But with that, I'll let you go. Y'all have a great day and a better tomorrow. Thank you again for watching.